Hey everybody, what time is it? Adventure, Adventure time. time! That's right, and where are we headed? Uh, St. St. George. George. We're down, going down to St. George area to San Hollow, and we're going to the Off-Road Wrecker Games, which we're going to be going to the Mad Moose Rentals area to check in. Uh, we might miss it because the cutoff might be too soon tonight. It's at 6 o'clock, um, and we're leaving now at 2.08. So we'll see how that goes, but if not, we'll register tomorrow. So for the drive today, we're going to be hitting up the, Saint, um, the Beaver Supercharger here at 21%, um, and we'll charge there for 10 minutes before we continue on down. Now, obviously, what's different about this trip is Jessica's not here. So I have my buddy here, and we have his two daughters in the back as well. So we have the car loaded up with seven people, and all of us are going to be heading down to enjoy the off-road games. Now, last year, I went to this, and I'll put cards above to that playlist, and this was the off-road wrecker games. Uh, but this year, they've just changed it to the off-road games. Something else that is different is we have this roof box on the Model Y, which is our first big trip with the roof box on any vehicle. We did one prior with the Model S, which hardly counts because it was kind of a shorter trip. And then also, uh, this is the first time with it on the Model Y. So we'll see how much it affects our range. Let's get started. We are now approaching the Beaver Supercharger. As you can see, we're only four minutes away from it here. And the estimated arrival percentage, as you see here as well, is 10%. So uh, when we left, I think it was around 21%, and so we're seeing a significant reduction here in uh, our, estimate, uh, our arrival percentage, simply because of the roof box, uh, primarily, I think. Uh, you can see over here that we've been getting 390 watt hours per mile during this segment of the drive. If we look over here at the uh, trip energy consumption screen, you can see that the driving was 16.8% more than was anticipated, because the car doesn't know that we have that roof box on the vehicle. And so, anyway, it's okay, we had enough range to do this. And when we used to do this in our Model S without the roof box, we would get to this Beaver Supercharger with five or 10% remaining. And so to be getting there with 11% with the roof box, I think is a win in my book. So we're gonna get plugged in at the Supercharger and see how fast it charges. One other side note, you can see here, it's estimated that we'll get to Mad Moose Rentals where we need to check in for the off-road games at 6.03 p.m., which is really close to their cutoff. So I'm kind of hopeful we might be able to make it still. So we'll see. We're now plugged in and right now we're getting 238 kilowatts and climbing. So I'm excited about this charge speed. I'm still new to the Model Y and the Model S charged so much more slowly. It peaked at 130 as an example and was typically below 100. So now we're at 255 kilowatts, 256. That is, you know, 250 is their expected uh, peak. And so that's fantastic. And at this rate, it's expecting we'll be here charging for 10 minutes. Now, that being said, oh, we're up to 257. I am going to route us to the supercharger down in St. George. So we're going to be driving to check in at Mad Moose Rentals, but then I need to get, be able to have enough range to get over to the supercharger in St. George. So I'm going to add that route in and see how long we need to charge for to do that. And it peaked at 258. So look at that, over a thousand miles an hour of charge rate and it's starting to drop now. So that was the peak. And so the quickest way to add a supercharger on is to tap here to see the list of superchargers and then just zoom in here. And I want this one, that's the new 250 kilowatt one. And then just hit the add button right there. And then I have to, of course, go into the trip and edit the trip and then make sure that they're in the right order and they're not. You can see the convention center superchargers first. So I have to redirect them, hit done and it'll reroute that. And now it's estimating that we need to be here for 15. Oh, we just changed to 10 minutes, so still figuring that out. But mostly what I'm interested in is what is the estimated arrival percentage here at that supercharger. And when it gets to 10%, right now it's negative 2%, uh, then we'll unplug and go. We're short on time. Right now it's estimating that we would get to Mad Moose Rental at 6.05. Their cutoff is 6, and I'm hopeful they'll let us in still. And so we're going to go straight there and then to the supercharger after that. And so now we're up to 30% already and it's estimating seven minutes before we need to go. And then also in conclusion, just for this first segment of driving, of course this will be variable, but 385 watt hours per mile is what the consumption was. And that's going 85 miles an hour with the roof box on the roof and some tailwind. So um, we're gonna be using this roof box a lot in the upcoming trips and I'm really anxious to see what our real world range will be with it up there. And I was estimating around maybe 175 miles and it looks like we're gonna be right on that. We got here um, with 10%, right? So we could have gone probably up to 200 miles, but it's with a safety margin, 175 miles of usable range is what I'm expecting. The estimated arrival percentage wasn't updating and then all of a sudden it did. So it went from negative two to 22%. So we way overshot that, unfortunately. It still has us getting there at 6.04 p.m. So I'm hopeful we'll get there like right at 6 p.m. And we're at 105 kilowatts 
and so uh, oh and 53 percent so let's get on the road all right we have made it and we actually got here at uh 5 57 and it's been five minutes since we arrived and so now it's 602 and we arrived here at 16 percent here at mad moose rentals we have finished with our check-in and gotten uh like our parking pass as well as our raffle ticket which is super generic raffle tickets and uh, kids wristbands and then the main wristband for paying people looks like that. And so we're good to go there. Uh, the next thing is we're hungry. It's 6.15 p.m. And so we're, and we need to pick up some food for the next several days while we're gonna be here. So we're actually gonna drive next here from Sand Hollow where we are now, all the way over here to the Costco in St. George. And you can see here that we're routed there and uh, it will be getting there at 10%. And then the supercharger is over here down that way. And so we're gonna be getting to the supercharger with 8%. Originally, I was thinking I'd just go straight to the supercharger, but the time being what it is and that this is kind of in along the route to go to Costco, we might as well just go to the supercharger after Costco and 8% is plenty fine within my safety margin. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're at Costco. Are you excited to shop? Yeah? <laughs> hey girls, how's your food? Good. Yummy. No, oh, go Clara, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing, Lid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting food for the next couple of days. I dropped the rest of the crew off at the house that we we're staying in. And then after getting them situated, I've driven over here to the St. George Convention Center Supercharger. This is a V3 supercharger, so we should get pretty good speeds, but it is still preconditioning the battery. So I don't know how warm it has been able to get the battery because I only took a few minutes to drive here. But I am arriving here at 6% on the battery. I've plugged in and it's already up to 7%. But looking at this, you can see the kilowatts are still increasing. It's looking like it got enough warmth into the battery to get up to maximum speed because you can see it's at 251 kilowatts now right over here. And so it's charging at just over a thousand miles an hour. And it looks like, well, at least right now, 250 is the peak. So I haven't entirely decided how much I'm going to be charging up the car here at this supercharger. We're going to be here for the next several days. Today is Wednesday night and we're going to be here through potentially Saturday night into Sunday morning, but we might go home Saturday afternoon. In any case, I'm going to be plugging the car into a standard household socket at the house we're staying in overnight the next several days. But during the day, I'm going to be driving over to Sand Hollow, which is roughly 25 minute drive and then back. And you know, what other around town driving we do while we're here? And because everyone else is pretty much sleeping in bed right now and here I can get free energy fast and just know that I have maximum range possible, I'm probably going to charge up to around 75%. And if you look here right now, it's set to 80% and it's estimating that we'll be here charging for 25 more minutes. And that's really not that bad at all, especially compared to our Model S charging speed. So I'm just probably going to go ahead and charge up to 80% and then head back to the house. And just like that, I'm back to the house now that we are staying in. In general today, I'm very pleased with how well the Model Y performed, especially that it was able to charge quickly enough to get enough range to get us down to the check-in in time, just barely. And then even then we were able to go to Costco and then come to the house and drop people off and then go to the supercharger. So I'm very pleased so far with the charging performance and the range of the Model Y, keeping in mind that it has the roof box on top. And of course, I'm coming from the Model S from 2015, so keep in mind that's my perspective. So in general, that charging session, let's look at the details of it now. What's convenient is now on the Model Y, I've found that I can use a whole bunch of different websites on here that are convenient for doing trips. And I'll be getting into this in more detail in future videos. I use Teslify to keep track of all of the details of our trips. It's uh, connected to the Tesla API. And this right here is the drive of from our house all the way down to the Beaver supercharger. And so you can see that that was a two hour and 13 minute drive and used 89% of the battery. And you can see that the watt hours per mile was 368. So not great, but has the roof box on top, right? And so 59% efficiency. And then if we, if we move here and look at the supercharging that we did in Beaver, we were there for only 12 minutes, which is a very manageable amount of time. And we gained 42% of the battery in that time, which was enough once again to drive all the way down to St. George, which the next drive was um, 104 miles. And that's where we checked in at Sand Hollow and then went to Costco and then to the house that we were staying in. And then I was able to drive all the way over to the St. George Convention Center supercharger and charge up there. So all of those drives, we got off of only 12 minutes here. And that charge uh, was 37 uh, kilowatt hours. 
And then over here, our average charge speed, that's the number one thing I pay attention to now, and that's 153 kilowatts, which is much faster than it would have been in past trips in the Model S. And this is at St. George Convention Center charge. So I was there for 32 minutes total in the end and added 74% to the battery. And then that you know adds in 243 rated miles of range, which real world range at freeway speeds, especially with a roof box on top is definitely more like 200 miles of range. And you can see the average charge speed was 115 kilowatts, which is fantastic in my book. And then also we can tap on the map down here and this shows the whole uh, route that we took today, which you know is not terribly interesting. It's just going down I-15 here, showing that we charged here in Beaver and then got down here to St. George. This is showing the drive stats for this drive today. And so we have a 347 watt hour per mile uh, drive with that roof box on top over the last about 300 miles. And then also one other thing I forgot to mention over here on, on Teslify is it has aggregate statistics over here on the side for the whole day of driving. And if we come up here all the way to the top, uh, we can see that there's information here about the drive. So we have seven drives today and different stats about those drives. Uh, but in general, you can see that we used 98 kilowatt hours according to this. And I find that interesting because that's 98. And over here, the car is saying it used 103. So a little bit of a deviation there. And I don't know where that discrepancy comes from, but it's pretty close. And then we drove for four hours and 19 minutes and gained or got 65% efficiency. And then down here we see some of the charge stats at superchargers anyway. And you can see that we stopped at two superchargers, gained 90.6 kilowatt hours, but total we spent 44 minutes charging over all of those miles that we drove today, uh, which was 298 miles. So with all that being said, I'm gonna come back over here and show you the charging screen. And here you can see that I have it set to 100%, but I actually don't want that. I'm gonna put this down to 90%, and right now we're at 79%. And right now you can see we are charging at 12 amps at 117 volts. And so it's estimating that it would take seven hours and 10 minutes, so you can see right here, to get up to uh, 90%, which actually is pretty reasonable. I think that we might actually achieve that by the time we leave tomorrow. So you might be wondering, where am I charging right now? And this is the house that we're staying in. And we've stayed here before in past videos, so this is not new to you necessarily, but for anybody that is new, um, the car's charged in here, are plugged in here with the mobile connector, and that cord is coming along over this way. And you can see the green pulsing light there, and that's plugged into our 50 amp extension cord, and that is coming around over this way. Now it's a little bit dark, so you probably have a, not a great view of it, but I'll turn on my cell phone light here so you can see better. So this is a, an adapter for TT30 to NEMA 1450. So this is what we use to charge at campground pedestals. But in my case, it's, it allows me to step down to a TT30 to a NEMA 515 outlet, which is, this is a standard household outlet. And then that is going uh, in with another heavy duty extension cord over this wall and into this outlet here on the back of the house. Um, this is just the best solution that I've been able to find for this location because this house has terrible locations for outlets and really no selection. This is the only one. And so I found with the extension cords and adapters that I had available, this is the most convenient solution. And in the past, when we've come here, I've brought a regular household outlet, you know, heavy duty extension cord from home. And then it just comes this whole way uh, with that one extension cord. But I like this solution better because I can use it at high powered locations and low powered locations with this adapter solution. So with one heavy duty cord, I'm able to do everything rather than having a heavy duty cord and a light duty cord. So anyway, well, I'm going to, all going to go to bed now and then I will uh, show you how the off-road games go tomorrow. And we've arrived. We're at the off-road games here and you can see we found a parking spot and let's see how excited everybody is. Is everyone excited for the off-road yeah! games? All right, let's go check out the event. As a quick update, uh, it's, it's eight o'clock is when we ended up getting here today, or I guess we got here earlier and we've just been sitting in the car for a little bit because it's 42 degrees outside and very windy. Uh, and I charged the car up and it got up to 90% last night, but now we're at 81% here at the event at Sand Hollow. What a beautiful view. Is it too, is it too cold? <laughs> The weather today is certainly suboptimal, but luckily they have this big old tent here. And so 
we are hanging out in the tent while we wait for the event to begin and at least there's no wind in there and there's still tons of people arriving of course and the view is spectacular but you can see that there are huge drifts of sand being blown from these sand dunes right there across the road in various places and it's quite windy but regardless people are here and we're gonna have fun hey how's the shelter for us girls is it working out yeah it's much nicer in here huh it's in the middle it's not windy at least it's still kind of cold in here for sure and the event the begins of Upla, that's utah public lands alliance they work very hard to make sure that we have places like this to do this but here he is. it is under attack for being able to access it the way that you want to who's there throughout utah is there anybody <laughs> hey lucy are you warm enough regardless of whether they're motorized <laughs> non-motorized space jumpers are you having fun? <laughs> Lydia, are you having we fun? We have eight <laughs> travel management plans coming in the next year. To have a voice in how this turns out. So the last day on the finals, we'll be choosing five teams to go up the trail Saturday morning and picking from those who's the first loser, second loser, and the winner, whatever. So, and then last, um, last contestant today is gonna be bent off-road. All right, let's start hiking. All right, you can line up for the shuttles. They'll be taking people up to the competition area soon. I think you're also able to walk. Finally, we took a long time to find a seat on a shuttle. So now we're heading up here to the competition area. There's a whole lot of people up there po posed on the rock. So I think that's where we're headed. So the shuttle really didn't save us very much time. That over there is where we got picked up. So, oh well, that's what we know now. Uh, Joey, so tell, what have you figured out? They told me that this is the first obstacle right here. Yeah. And then I imagine you can see the trail, the markers keep going up there. Yeah. So I think what we can do is we can watch a couple here and then go up there, watch a couple there, and then keep going. All right, we we got all day for this, so uh, the event's not happening quickly at this point, but it takes a while to get all the people up here. Well, it said the first event starts at 10. Yeah. And currently we're about eight minutes to 10. Okay, so we're a little early. Here comes the more air right there. Lydia, are you excited? Dad, are the cars going to drive over that? Yeah, that's where the cars are going to go, right there where you saw that black rubber, those rubber tire marks. Beautiful day, isn't it? It is, it is. This is a uh, great view up here. You can see just the snow on the mountains. For, oh, down south of Georgia. You can see the snow. That's a pretty exciting sight. But yeah, it's a beautiful place out here. So excited to see everybody come out and the weather. So I don't know if there is an event going on up there, but if there isn't, then those people are going to be waiting for a long time for us to get all the way up there from here because <laughs> we've been here for a while and we're just waiting for the event to get started. Uh, I'm loving every second of it. <laughs> yeah, this is good times. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was tasked with finding another MC and you were standing up there talking to somebody and this big voice and great personality and I was like, she's going to be good on the mic and you were killing it, so uh, great choice. All right, folks, we are starting. <laughs> Let's hear some What do you think, girls? I can't wait till the end when it gets on the ground. You can't wait till the end? Yeah. <laughs> Look, it's the more bear. <laughs> Robbie Layton. Why is nobody riding on the seats on top? <laughs> I know, I have to go up there. Yeah. Look at the steering wheel. It's just a bar. Smooth. <laughs> Nothing's funner than watching somebody else drive your truck. <laughs> You're right. Are 
get some good shots, Lydia? Yeah. <laughs> so this is BSF's rig, but Project Farm is driving. That doesn't sound good. Oh. Are you not entertained? <laughs> and it's the banana. We are heading up to the next obstacle and it's going to come up right here. Let's go get a good spot. Here comes the more bear. You excited, Clara? Yep. She got sand in her eyes, huh? Kind of a bummer. Stickers, Lucy. Thank you. Yes. got to navigate our way on foot all the way up this to get back to the front. Maybe a little bit on the boring side, especially because we were seeing it from far away, so it, the lens compresses the obstacles. You can see they kind of slid there. So this little next ledge is the biggest drop off of this downhill portion they're doing right now. Are you the next photographer? <laughs> you get some pictures, yeah.
That is a tough spot. Ready for this obstacle, Lucy? Lydia? Yeah? Alright. Hey girls, what did you think of that? Do you like that? But I have no idea how he's gonna make it around this bed right here. That's what I want to see. Yeah. I can smell the rubber burning. I can sm smell a couple of things burning, yeah. Watch out for BSF Recovery
What is that? Oh yeah! Wow! Oh, they're not done yet. There's a Jeep back here, I think, with a head gasket blow. We got yeah, I can smoke smell coming out of the, the tailpipe like crazy. Yeah. Oh, they made it! Yeah! Oh! Oh! oh. at our new location. This is a really wide spot. You can see the flags way over there on the other side. So they're just allowed to go anywhere in here that they want. So this is going to be interesting to see what routes the different rigs pull. In the meantime, the kids are just making fun objects out of rocks because the sandstone here is so soft. And the girls love playing in sand anywhere, so they found a good spot. Lucy, what are you making? A bowl. A bowl? It looks like you're halfway there. And the Moore Vare is the first one to arrive. Let's see what direction they go. I don't know if you heard that, but Matt said it's scary in that direction, and it looks like that's the way they're going. That is not supposed to happen. The liquid needs to stay inside to do its job. Looks like it was about all out, so he'll probably be okay. Be okay for the rest of this trail, right? Yay, we have a taker coming in our direction.
that's interesting. They're using a winch to control how far out their axle goes. to a new spot but the lead vehicles are already at the end of the trail and this one his back tires were spinning and I think his hitch is hitting the ground or something oh it looks like they're making it and they made it He made it! That family knows what's up. The mom's got a helmet on, the dad has a helmet, all the kids have goggles. <laughs> They're no strangers to sand, it would seem. Hey girls, what are you doing now? You're in a windy spot with sand in it. I know. My granola bar is all crumbs. Your granola bar is all crumbs? Yeah, that happens. It got smashed by my waddle bottle. Oh, bummer. I like <laughs> At least the view is beautiful, huh? So there's all the contestants lined up, and they're now all going to go through the shoot. More bear is first.
two months, and here it is, conquering these incredible trails. Spectators, try to keep an exit route in mind. While these trucks come down, you're going to need somewhere to run, somewhere to dump. Those tow mirrors might be put in by themselves, honestly. True, true. But that might be a good view for one, though. Get a top that, look down, and see what you just drove up. Make sure you don't pass out. Absolutely. They have made the tight spot. Let's see. That is a very, very big girl going up this hill. They seem to know exactly what they're doing. They have expertly got that way. There they go. They're climbing the wall. there is the back of the line that I just showed you from the other side and so I've, we've now walked all the way past that line and it's just moving so incredibly slowly we decided to uh, walk back down I mean we walked up here most of the way so that's the girls there heading down and a bunch of other people let's see how long this takes right now it is 2:09 p.m. so let's see how long it takes to get back to the bottom we are still hiking down I just thought I'd point out, look how scarred this rock is from all of the low clearance vehicles coming through here, which are actually high clearance vehicles, but not for that. That is really impressive. You're loving the sand here, right? I thought you were. And we're about to go all the way over there. We have to go across this sand dune to get back to the main stage, but it's hard to get them past this area because they want to just dig in the sand. So the hike back down will not be as fast as it could be if you were actually intending to get down quickly. <laughs> we just came across this Jeep in a pickle. Can he keep his momentum up? And we'll never know. Oh, there he is. So looking at the tracks, actually, he came from up here. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the plan was. Maybe there wasn't one. We certainly don't have a plan, but the kids are totally fine with that. They have the world's, maybe not the world's, but they have Utah's largest sandbox right here. <laughs> He's making progress. I didn't know. 
Yeah, he made it! Wow, this is rough with the wind. There's so much sand. Can you see? Oh, there we go. That was hard to get up right there. So much sand in our eyes, huh, Clara? Oh. So this shuttle driver just dropped these people off right here. So we are now where uh, the shuttle would have taken us to, and it is 2.55 p.m. I'll put it on screen how many minutes that was. So we're pretty much to the bottom almost. We still have a little bit of walking to do to go under the highway and then join up with the Wrecker games right over that way. Yay, we made the tunnel, guys! Yay! We found a spot to hang out and get a view. This is the fenced off area for the Wrecker games. But the wreckers are actually way over there. So I'm not totally sure what this is going to look like, but we're here to see it. Eli, do you see? Get the skateboard and then come up here. anything quite like that. America. Hey girls, are you ready to head back to the house? Yeah. 
we were able to see the 8x8 Jeep, which everybody wanted to see. Everybody decided that we've had enough sand in the ice today and we've had enough fun with the off-road games and off-road records competition. So we are back to our Model Y and we are going to head back to the house now and do some other fun things this afternoon. Since we got here this morning, all of this sand has blown around our tires. And I've seen it way worse on some of the other vehicles. If you're not already subscribed, then do so to get automatically notified when my next video drops of the off-road games. With that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.